Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm here with Aki Fujimara, who is the Chairman and CEO of D2S. One of the big topics today in semiconductor manufacturing is the state of next-generation lithography. We've been extending 193 nanometers. We're hearing about double, triple, quadruple, and even sextuple patterning. So what's the state of lithography now, and what's going to change? Yeah, definitely. It's, um, it's an amazing thing to have the Moore's Law continue and continue this continuous innovation, some small and some bigger, and EUV is certainly one of the bigger ones. And there are many, many next generation lithography technologies that's being explored right now. I think the SPY coming up, the, if you look at the uh, list of uh, papers, and you can see the variety of different things that people are trying to get to the next node and the next node after that and so on. Um, I think, yeah, it's uh, uh, probably the case that uh, EUV is not quite ready for the next node 14 or the next node after that at 10, uh, except for maybe some very limited use. So um, optical is probably the way it's going to go for quite a while now. Um, uh, the great thing is uh, multiple patterning is definitely the way um, people are seeing the extension of optical um, uh, 193 nanometer immersion technology to continue. And I would say maybe hmm, 10 years ago, you know, I, I get to hang out with uh, these uh, luminaries in the industry and, you know, hear their opinion. And uh, I would say 10 years ago, they were saying, um, maybe it's not possible without some next generation technology to replace 193i. But uh, nowadays, I think everybody pretty much says, um, it, you know, it's just a matter of cost. Uh, Technology-wise, multiple patterning can take us forever uh, in 193i. It's just a question of uh, whether economically uh, it makes it worthwhile to go down if we don't have something, some alternative. So, um, yeah, I think optical can uh, keep going. What are you seeing as the big issues for the uh, photo mask industry today? Is it things like rising mask costs? Is it... Uh, um, uh, slow e-beam throughputs and write times, photo mask, capex, where, where are the problems? Well, definitely all of the above. And the uh, annual e-beam initiative surveys that we do um, of the industry luminaries, uh, they, um, they indicate that all of those are uh, concerns. But um, I, I personally think that um, it's actually something else. It's uh, um, uh, how... Um, <laughs> it's kind of odd, but how mass quality fails to be appreciated economically in the mask industry. Um, in almost anything else, um, when you do something better, um, you get paid more for it, right? But in the mask industry, cost is such a dominant factor um, that, um, uh, that that's the dominating thing. And, you know, people almost can't afford to pay more for higher quality. And I think that's a, a fundamental root cause for some of the problems in the mask industry. And, uh, it, it, you know, it, on one hand, economically, people can't afford to pay for better cost, higher, uh, higher quality. But on the other hand, it's absolutely clear that mass quality, higher mass quality, is important for the semiconductor industry, uh, you know, makes better wafers, makes uh, uh, higher yielding wafers, uh, higher yielding chips, therefore. And um, uh, so, you know, even economically, it seems to me, higher quality masks contribute to, uh, you know, lower cost. But yet, um, that's not the behavior. And I, I think that's, that's, that's the biggest issue in the mask industry, I think. Well, one concern in the photo mask shop is the slow write time of e-beam. What's going to happen there? Yeah, well, um, D2S has an answer for that. Um, uh, there's a, a technique called the model-based mass data preparation, basically using simulation as a part of the mass data preparation cycle as opposed to purely doing it in a rule-based way. We think of it as... Um, really uh, an, 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 an adaption of what happened to lithography with OPC turning from rule-based to simulation based to model-based about 10 years ago, and maybe going even further into IoT or pixelated masks and other techniques like that. Um, 
I think the same thing is happening in the mask industry, mask data preparation in the next uh, 10 years or so. Um, uh, definitely when multi-beam comes around, the only way you can make use of multi-beam is to have a, a purely simulation-based mass data preparation. And with BSB techniques that are being deployed right now, um, what NBMDP, the innovation uh, that's embedded in NBMDP, is to allow overlapping shots um, to be able to print reliably the contours that are much more complex, even curvilinear uh, contours and not suffer from uh, uh, much higher uh, throughput problems in the mask writing machine by reducing the shot count. That was a recent e-beam survey and there were a number of elements. One of those though was the possible emergence of a multi-beam e-beam mask writing system. When will we actually see that type of system? What, what kinds of problems will it solve? Will it solve all the problems and does it mean the end of a single beam e-beam? Yeah, um, just as you know, EUV or other things are next generation lithography techniques in, uh, on the wafer writing side, on the mask writing side, multi-beam is definitely the promising technology for the next generation, uh, you know, maybe the next uh, 10 or 20 years worth of writing. Uh, VSB lasted that long in the last 20 years. Um, so um, uh, I, yeah, I do actually personally see it as uh, the next generation thing that's going to happen sooner or later. You know, there might be delays, anything new like that. Um, uh, th there probably are some difficulties. And, uh, you know, whether you can hit one particular node or not, uh, it's difficult to predict. But uh, I, I see it as something that's definitely going to happen. Um, uh, it, you know, it's really hard to say if it's going to be in the next two years or in the next five years. And uh, that's really difficult for me to call. What are you seeing as the big issues in mask preparation? Um, I think uh, one of the biggest things is the emergence of the need for simulation-based. And from a customer's perspective, the emergence of the problem of mask hotspots. Um, um, uh, little hotspots is dominating the wafer problems uh, in the industry. I would say, you know, people, uh, luminaries would say 90, 95% of the problems that you see on wafer or wafer yield or wafer performance, uh, chip performance, and, uh, are due to lithal hotspots. And I think um, what's going to happen over the next 10 years is that uh, an increasing percentage of the problems are going to be identified as having come from mask hotspots um, instead or in addition to um, a way for a little hotspots. So um, mask hotspots is definitely an emerging issue and, and uh, that's reflected by an um, EV initiative annual survey where the industry luminaries indicated that 75% uh, of them think that by 2020 um, uh, uh, mask hotspots are going to be a significant issue. And many of those um, thought that uh, mask hotspots might be just as significant as the little hotspots, which would be a huge change because right now it's almost totally dominated by little hotspots. So uh, I think that's the, that's the next emerging thing. And this changes and gets worse and starts flipping around at each new successive node, right? Yes. Um, it's gotten worse and it's gotten to the point, I would say, where typically I hear, again, you know, the industry luminaries uh, uh, seem to be saying that at 28 nanometer, they started to see mask hotspots as, you know, they analyze what went wrong with something. And it, it turns out in a post-talk analysis that it was a mask problem. Um, and uh, uh, that's definitely going to be increasing as the sizes of things that you need to print on the mask get smaller and as the precision with which you have to duplicate the design that came out of OPC on the mask become more and more complex and more and more uh, non-orthogonal. Non-orthogonal things are specifically difficult to uh, uh, predict with VSB-based writing, variable shape beam-based writing, where the fundamental fundamental shape that you're writing with is uh, rectangle. So uh, you have uh, uh, up and down and left and right. That's easier to write reliably. And all the all other angles or curvilinear shapes are much more difficult to write reliably. Is the industry really ready for EUV masks? 
Yeah, um, uh, EUV masks is one of the many difficult topics that are on uh, the, the challenges for making EUV work. Um, uh, the mask infrastructure for EUV um, you know, was designed so that uh, today's infrastructure can be used with a different uh, mask material, so um, you know at least you don't have to go invent a new UV mask making machine or something like that. Um, there are some problems uh, uh, potentially with uh, uh, a mid-range scatter, uh, two micron level mid-range scatter that ARF masks have. Uh, they have them, but uh, it's so little that you can pretty much ignore them. In UV, you cannot ignore them, so you have to correct for that. Um, you do have the mask blank issue uh, that tends to dominate conferences like SPY um, in uh, interest and topic. Um, uh, mask repair is much more difficult, and uh, defect in uh, raw material uh, is practically impossible to be 100% clean. So people think about things like how can we make the design so that you can avoid those spots and you know things like that. So there's a lot of room for innovation to make EUV masks happen. But uh, it, it seems to me that uh, uh, these are uh, things that can be overcome. There's been some talk about moving to a new mask size. What do you think about that? Yeah, EV masks, uh, one of the issues uh, is that um, from a lithography point of view, it's better to have uh, larger masks because in order to get that NA that they want, um, they need to make the magnification factor larger. Um, you know, typical masks today are uh, 4X masks and, and uh, a greater than 4X magnification is, or demagnification really, uh, needs to uh, be in place for EUV. So from a lithography point of view, they would like to see larger mask form factors. Um, the problem is uh, mask making uh, equal structure, uh, I don't know, can support uh, two different mask sizes. I think, you know, if all of a sudden everything goes to a different form factor, maybe that's, that can be supported, but even that's probably difficult. Um, uh, definitely uh, in the interim period, which might be five years or something, uh, in order to go to a different size, the mask equal structure, the entire equal structure, has to support two different sizes. That's probably practically very, very difficult to do. So there is definitely a dilemma there um, in going to EV. Aki Fujimara, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.